Morning, friends, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements in my practice where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and often deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis and eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human body, the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. Our number is 844 236 844-236-6010. Try to call early so we can squeeze in as many calls as possible. We have a... Uh, we have a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour, Natasha Trenev. She was on about a month ago or so, and we didn't get to finish up. Natasha is known as the mother of probiotics. In fact, Natasha is the uh, woman who actually coined the word probiotics, the founder of the probiotic industry. And we're going to talk some good bacteria, microbes. Almost every day, another article comes out about the importance of probiotics. If you have any digestive problems, you have any blood sugar problems, did you know type 1 and type 2 diabetes are now being linked to dis biosis, messed up gut bacteria. Probiotics are truly the primal foundational level of good health and they're the foundation of the triangle of disease. It's where disease begins at the level of the gut and at the level of the so-called microbiome, the universe of bacteria, the trillions upon trillions of bacteria that live in the gut. We're going to talk to Natasha Trenev, the mother of, pro of the probiotic industry. I'm not going to say the mother of probiotics, that doesn't sound good. The mother of the probiotic industry, uh, bottom of the hour. So we'll get your calls here in our second segment, 844-236-6010. If you're interested in joining the Longevity team, if you heard Dr. Wallach on George Nori yesterday, yesterday evening, I got tons of letters. I kind of want to go over some of these letters. I might do that uh, for a little bit if we don't have calls. Uh, I might go over some of these letters. Folks who listen to George Nori, obviously they're not familiar with our bright side philosophy here, with Doc's philosophy. And so some of these letters are kind of interesting. And uh, if, we don't get, if we don't have calls, we'll go over some of these letters in our second segment. 844-236-6010 is our phone number. If you're interested in purchasing any of the Truth Treatment products, my Retinol 5% Gel, or any of the Vitamin C products, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, or our Omega-6 Healing Cream, please head over to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, we're talking pigmentation issues, dark spots, hyperpigmentation. Technically, it's called melasma. The most important thing to recognize if you have hyperpigmentation issues is you have a body issue. No one just has melasma. No one just has pigmentation. Do you ever see hyperpigmentation, dark spots, blotchy dark spots, or melasma on a two-year-old or a three-year-old or a five-year-old? No. It only happens as we're getting older. It only happens as the as the impact of nutritional deficiencies and toxicities and sugar and diabetes and dysbiosis and all the ways we break down, melasma and hyperpigmentation only show up as these breakdowns accrue, as they add up. Melasma and pigmentation is part of the general breakdown of the body, and this is such good news because it means once we start addressing our blood sugar issues, once we start addressing our our uh, uh, digestive toxicity and our dysbiosis and all the things we talk about at the basic levels, the fundamental levels of health, guess what? Your melasma will go away. Our pigmentation will disappear. Hyperpigmentation will disappear. And we'll add years to our life with no drugs, no dermatologists, no doctors. That's, what, that's why I do this program, you guys. We don't 
need to be medicalized. If you get hit by a car, that's one thing. If you have an infection, that's another thing. Those are medical issues, truly. And praise God for the surgeons and, and even for antibiotics, as problematic as they are these days. But other than that, our health challenges are lifestyle issues. They are our business. There's a fascinating relationship between the chemistry of pigmentation and the chemistry of stress. Stress biochemicals, specifically cortisol, are intimately linked to pigment chemicals. Cortisol and pigment chemicals, stress hormones and pigment hormones are connected. The hormones that initiate pigmentation are connected to the hormones of stress. That's because when our bodies were being formed millions of years ago, in addition to wild animals, lack of food, and maybe lack of water, the sun was a major stressor. So over the course of evolution, over the course of millions of years, a link was formed between stress hormones and pigment hormones. And this idea of the global stress response, of a, glo a stress response that covers the blood system, a stress response that covers immune cells, a stress response that covers the skin, a stress response that covers weight gain. Do you know if you can't lose weight, that's a classic sign of a body in distress. That's a classic sign of stress hormones. And you don't need any magic formulas to lose the weight. You just got to figure out why is your body in stress or in distress. And it's the same with pigmentation. And it's the same with inflammation. And it's the same with immunity. These are global stress responses. And when I say global stress, I'm talking about the entire body. That's what I mean by global a uniform stress response that includes all the bodily systems from head to toe. Nobody just has a stress response in their joints. Nobody just has a stress response in their eyes or, in their, or on their skin or anywhere else. It's global. It covers the whole body. Doctors actually call this SIRS. It's a fancy way of saying uh, the whole body is falling apart. Systemic Inflammatory Response Syndrome. And they'll tell you it's an emergency. It's an acute emergency. In the uh, reading from the um, August 1998 issue of the journal Shock, quote, the problems of inflammation leading to organ dysfunction and failure continue to be major problems after injury and operations and with intensive care for many diseases and problems. That means that when you have a, an acute injury or when you have a surgical procedure, your body goes into a systemic inflammatory response. But guess what? It can happen gradually. It doesn't have to happen in response to an acute emergency. It can occur on a gradual continuum that gets worse over time. It can start off small. This systemic inflammatory response syndrome can start off almost imperceptibly. We don't even know what's happening because it happens at the level of a cell or two or three or four. But then it gets worse. It's not like the only way we go into systemic system failure is acutely in an emergency. It's not the, like the only way we go into systemic inflammatory response, like turning on a switch. It can happen progressively and gradually over the course of time. And it can cover every system of the body, including the skin. Hyperpigmentation and blotchiness can be signs of this. Pretty much all degenerative diseases have an element of this emergency response, all of them. I get so many letters on macular degeneration. I can't tell you. That must be, uh, you know, you don't hear about it that much, except I get, I don't know, maybe five letters a day on macular degeneration. Just last night, I got probably six or seven letters after Doc was on George Norrie about macular degeneration. Well, if you got macular degeneration, forget the macula part, as, as serious as that is. It's a leading cause of blindness. The degeneration part is the part that you want to pay attention to. Degeneration is degeneration is degeneration, whether it's in the macula or the joints or anywhere else. And degeneration is part of the stress emergency response. Remember, the body's a healing system. The body is not a degenerating system by nature. We wouldn't have survived two million years. If our body was meant to degenerate and rot, we would have been long gone. We would have been extinct a long time ago. But we're not extinct. We survived millions of years because we're not a degenerative organism. Our bodies are not degenerative systems. They're regenerative systems, which means if we're degenerating and not regenerating, something is wrong. Something's getting into the system that's interfering. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. All 
right, we are back on the bright side. We've got um, Dr. Uh, Natasha Trent. I'm not sure if she's a physician or a PhD. Actually, she's not even a doctor, but she is the mother of the probiotic industry, the founder of the probiotic industry, and she's going to talk about super strains of probiotics, and uh, we're going to talk about just exactly what bacteria are. You know, we talk about these things all the time, but we really don't, we don't have a grasp on what exactly these bacterial cells are. There's 100 trillion of the cells, uh, supposedly. I don't know how anybody counts these things, but 100 trillion uh, probiotic cells in the gut. Uh, I'm sorry, a quadrillion. There's 10 times more. Uh, probiotic cells in the gut than there are human cells. That's an amazing concept right there. Anyway, we'll talk to Natasha Trenov about probiotics at the bottom of the hour. Did you hear Dr. Wallach yesterday on George Norrie? If you did and you have a comment or a question, I'd love to hear what you thought. We've got tons of letters and uh, do have some phone calls here. I wanted to address some of these letters, though, because, you know, for you guys listening to The Bright Side, you're hearing stuff that nobody else knows. When we talk about the, the global stress response. We talk about all disease being cell disease and how you take care of a few little switches at the root level of your disease process and the leaves take care of themselves. All these ideas that I call the bright side philosophy. Most folks haven't heard of this. And so when I get some of these letters, you know, they're, they're a little bit disconcerting because people don't realize how simple and how easy it is to restore yourself back to health. I got a letter here from Andrew who says, uh, I heard that I heard it, the doctor on coast to coast talking about tachycardia. My eight year old son, has this extra node firing and is on a tenolol for it. All right? I'm going to tell you about a tenolol here in a minute. The experts, he didn't put it in quotes, but I'm going to put it in quotes. The experts in the hospital don't know why it's happening. Now I'm planning to take him to a chiropractor. from Andrew, a desperate parent. And I'm going to call Andrew and I'll, I'll address this personally with him. But just so you guys know, uh, just so anybody who's new to the program knows, and most of you folks have heard me say this before, tachycardia is a, a fancy way of saying a fast heartbeat. If your heartbeat is fast or out of control or the rhythm is wrong, you got an emergency. You got a freaked out heart like you have a baby in distress. Your heart is like a baby and a tachycardia or a fibrillation or an arrhythmia it represents a baby in distress. And the stupidest thing you could do, experts at the hospital, is poison this poor eight-year-old child with a tenolol. Tenolol is a nasty beta blocker drug that literally, not figuratively, literally poisons the heart. An eight-year-old kid? Are you kidding me? You're going to poison the heart of an eight-year-old kid because you can't figure out why his heart is in tachycardia or his heart is freaking out? So this is a kid who needs to stop, uh, stop eating the way he's eating. That's the first thing. Probably sugar is involved. If there's any digestive issues, almost guaranteed there's going to be digestive issues. And I'll, I'll talk to this parent today, and, and I'll clue you in tomorrow on what I found out. Uh, if there's any food allergies, milk, gluten, grains, flour, whatever, that has to be controlled, and probiotics are a must-have. The, the Healthy Star Pack and the Mighty 90, also a must-have, especially the B-complex. Children are so dependent on the B-complex because they're moving fast, and I'm not just talking about their bodies uh, on the outside, I'm talking about their metabolism and their chemistry is moving fast. It's dependent on vitamins, especially the Bs, and the heart is also dependent on the Bs. I guarantee you this is a child with B-complex deficiency. Get them on the B vitamins, get them on the Healthy Start Pack, wean them off the sugar and the gluten and the food allergies, get them on a good probiotic like the Biolumin Nightly Essence. These are all non-medical strategies that we can use. This is a body in distress. This eight-year-old kid's got a body in distress. Calm the body down. And of course, deep breathing techniques are always a must. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you heard Doc yesterday, I'd love to hear what you thought. We do have a couple minutes here. Uh, let's go to Paul in New York. What's up, buddy? Welcome to the Bright Side, Paul. Hey. Hey, Paul. How you doing, Ben? Is this chicken, chicken foot, Paul? Yeah, that's me. Chicken foot. What's up, man? How you doing? Hey, I heard you talk to a caller about uh, progesterone and pro pro pregnenolone. Pregnenolone. Yes, sir. A couple weeks ago. Okay. So I went and looked at my cream that I've been using for five years. Yeah. Figured out the formula. Yeah. And I'm only getting 20 milligrams. That ain't very much, Paul. Is it pro progesterone or pregnenolone? What kind of cream is it? Well, that was the progesterone. That's nothing. You got to yeah. go to a go to a farm. When I was making, when I had my compounding pharmacy, I sold it last year. But when I had my compounding pharmacy, I was making a ten percent progesterone cream. That's five hundred. I know. I will when I get my pharmacy again. I have a non-compete I had to sign 
uh, so I can't do a pharmacy for a little bit. But when I, as soon as uh, my non-competes up, I'm going to do another one, a compounding pharmacy. It'll be a skincare pharmacy. Anyway, progester I was making a 10% progesterone cream. That's 500 milligrams per teaspoon. And we were recommending a quarter teaspoon. That's 125 milligrams per dose. That would be, that's uh, six times the amount that you're getting in your product. Is it 20 milligrams per dose or 20 milligrams in the whole product? 20 milligrams per pump. And okay, so yeah, so you need six times pump. that much. You, you'll go through right. that whole thing in a couple of days. So after now, that's, listening to that, I yeah. did 100 milligrams, and I'm slathered in this stuff. you yeah, got to take a shower afterwards. I can't help you there, my friend. Why don't you get some pregnenolone capsules? I tablets? got some pregnenolone. It's Did a that make a difference? Brand. It's yeah. 100 milligrams. Now you're talking. Per, per pill. Yeah. But it also has 25 DHEA. Yeah, you don't want that. You don't want that. Just get the stray pregnenolone, and then if you need DHEA, take that separate. And they're both good. DHEA is a little trickier, though, than pregnenolone. Pregnenolone, you don't have to worry about. DHEA, if you take too much, you can break out a little bit or maybe lose some hair or, or get body hair. DHEA is a little bit more potent. I like sticking can with I pregnenolone. Can this off? You can. can See what happens. You're not, it's not going to kill you or anything. You may just break out a little milligrams? bit. Yeah, take, take uh, the 100 milligram pregnenolone, 25 milligram DHEA. See what happens. Can I finish this off. I'll get the pregnenolone, 100 milligrams. Can I do one? That's, once I get just the pregnenolone, can I do two a day? You'll have to see. If the, the side effects on pregnenolone are a little fatigue, it's not a big deal. You just get tired. And then the side effects on the DHEA, as I say, you may lose some hair. Your hair may start to thin. And you may, if you have prone towards oily skin or acne, you may start breaking out. Uh, but that's basically the only, the only thing you have to worry about. You have to take a lot for that to happen. Yeah, I hear you talking about 1 and 5 and 10 milligrams of DHEA on your No, ten. I like a 10 milligram dose to start and then working yourself up to 25 milligrams. There's no real way to know. You just got to go by your symptomology. Okay, All right? Doc. Thank you, Paul. Hey, God bless, man. Have a beautiful day, buddy. Chicken foot Paul. All right. Uh, John in Missouri, what's up? Welcome to the Bright Side. Yes. Uh, hey. I've, I've um, had some pretty bad problems for a while now. It's Pretty taking me down for, to a pretty low level of weakness. First of all, I was exposed to severe black mold, living in that, and um, really bad. And then I had uh, I've been overseas as a missionary in a foreign country in, in very primitive conditions and exposed to some pretty bad parasites. And well, had a lot of good. them in me. I've got rid of the mold now, and I've got rid of the parasites now. Also, had the walking pneumonia, and I got rid of that. Well, what do you have? Right now, How can I, have, I help you? What do you got going okay, on now? Bad nail fungus, okay. memory loss. All right. How old are you? How old are you, John? And morning, uh, a lot of stiffness. How old are you, John? 69. Okay, so your body's starting to break down, my friend. Forget the parasites. Forget the mold. Forget everything yeah, in the past. I'm... That's all in the Let me finish, my friend. Yeah, it's all in the past. We need to get you strong now. We need to start you building up again, all right? All right. So, so step number one, get a food diary or get a notebook and start a food diary where you write down everything you eat and how you're responding to those foods in terms of digestive symptoms, bloating, gas, diarrhea, constipation, anything. We need data. We need information about what's happening right now. Second step you're going to do is you're going to start to stabilize your blood sugar with the sweeties and more protein and more good fat, especially coconut oil and butter. Hey, John, I'm, at, I'm just out of time, man. Why don't you hang on the line? I'm going to talk to you off air, okay? Don't go away, John. I will talk to you off the air. Got Natasha Trenev coming up in the bottom of the hour. We're going to talk some probiotics. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. We're back on the bright side. Thank you for joining us, friends. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive page at brightsideben.com. If you miss a the program, they're all archived. And you can also check out my blog, pharmacistben.com, and also my new blog with George Norrie, criticalhealthnews.com. You could purchase any of the longevity products you hear recommended or advertised on the program right off the websites, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. All right, I am very excited We're about my, um, about my guest, Natasha Trenev, the founder of the probiotic industry. And we had her on about a month ago, and we got to talk about probiotics. Didn't get to talk anywhere near enough. In fact, you could do a whole show on pro, uh, a daily show on probiotics. Not a day goes by without multiple articles coming out about the importance of probiotics for autoimmune diseases and for digestive problems and for diabetes. And I was talking to Natasha off the air. Now we think uh, scientists believe that probiotics in the atmosphere or bacteria in the atmosphere are actually responsible for controlling the climate. 
and some people believe that droughts are related to killing off of the microbiome in the environment. And uh, we're going to talk to Natasha about some human biological aspects of probiotic health and good bacteria health of a healthy microbiome. Welcome to The Bright Side. Natasha, good to talk to you again. Thank you so much. I'm very delighted to do your show. Thank you. And uh, for the new listeners, why don't you just give a little bit of a, a, a nutshell biography just for a minute or two about how you got into probiotics and how, why they call you the founder of the probiotic industry. Uh, very briefly, um, my parents uh, came to this country in the mid-1950s. I was a child, and in the mid-1960s in California, uh, particularly Glendale, California, my father started the, uh, a natural yogurt company called Continental Culture Specialists, and we were the first to introduce a liquid acidophilus and a natural-style Bulgarian yogurt that was sold to the health food industry ex exclusively. And because of my family connection and work with my family into the mid-1970s, I decided to um, study on my own because I felt that uh, there was something so important about these bacteria that we had to uh, be able to concentrate them and deliver them to the human being in a way that they would survive the stomach acid and really have an impact on the 27 feet of the GI tract. So uh, seven years of research and uh, collaboration with the University of uh, Nebraska and North Carolina, I introduced the first single strain of Lactobacillus acidophilus, uh, DDS1, uh, to the health industry, first through pra uh, health practitioners and then to the retail stores. And uh, that's how I started the whole category of probiotics and look where it is today. Well, what was the response when you, you know, today people are almost, you know, they hear it all the time. It doesn't shock anybody. But what was your, what was the response people had when you told them about bacteria, which everybody thought, thought of, I'm sure, back then as germs? And you, what was the response people had when you said, no, these things are important for life. They're probiotic. They're for life. What, what did people well, say? Well, it depends really on the individual. I mean, I've had mixed results. There were people who tried the product, didn't care what I was giving them but because they felt so much better. And uh, the way the whole business got started is miraculous because I was doing research down at the, with a friend of mine at USC, and I was making sample of, of freeze-dried uh, product in powder, was not even encapsulating it and giving it to a uh, nutritionist that I knew in uh, Westwood, California. And uh, in 48 hours, the man called me back and said, oh, my God, what is this? It's, uh, you know, revolutionizing my patient's health, and they're calling me up, begging me for this product. And before I knew it, people started showing up on my doorstep. Um, the only discouragement I had was for, you know, the people who we call the leaders of our industry, the vice presidents and presidents of large vitamin companies who thought I literally lost my mind. And, uh, and were giving me uh, names of uh, therapists that I should go to because I really needed help. <laughs> they thought you were mentally ill because you were talking about bacteria? About good bacteria? Uh, no, because I was going to sell a single strain bacteria for, uh, you know, $20, and, the ne and they w it wasn't even a category. It didn't exist. And they just thought I lost wow. my mind that, you know, people are never going to buy friendly bacteria or otherwise and, and pay that kind of money for their health. Well, now, what year so are we talking? That was the kind of pushback I had. And, what year? Uh, what year um, was you know, this? I, I did grand rounds uh, at, at UCLA in the mid 1980s and had, you know, uh, what I call reputable GI fellows tell me that the large intestine is sterile. And I said, okay, you know, if you they want to believe the, that, wow, and wow. wanted me to give them, you know, um, clinical trials to show how each of these bacteria affect the 100 trillion bacteria that lie in our GI tract. It was, was absurd. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's almost an impossible thing to do. So, uh, you know, that that was the kind of pushback I got. Now, when you you grew up in Russia, is that right? No, I'm I'm originally Yugoslav, and Yugoslavia. I came to this uh, came to the United States when I was eight years old. Were there fermented foods that you guys were eating in Europe, in Eastern Europe, as you were oh, growing yeah. up? My, my father um, was the official court supplier to the King of Yugoslavia. Uh, my father is Macedonian. He's no longer with us. Um, but, you know, my, my grandfather's uh, uh, going back for 700 years. 
uh, were involved in making uh, yogurt and cheese and selling them to Western Europe or societies around them. And uh, it's been in my family for uh, literally many multiple generations and uh, in, in a culture that lives in that this is a staple in our culture. And to be recognized in a culture where this food is a staple, to be the leader or the um, you know, purveyor of the finest uh, yogurt and cheeses uh, meant, meant quite a bit. Now, I, I, got a, I got a question for you, because we talk about probiotics every single day on this program. I know, you know, off the air, we were, you and I were joking around. We said bacteria rule the world, and I, that's, I believe that. Bacteria rule the world, and I find that one a, a very interesting irony, that we think human beings, the most complex animals on the planet, somehow are, are in charge. But it's really the, the simplest organisms, the bacteria. But here's, a, here's an interesting question, and maybe a stupid question. I hope, hope you don't find it stupid. What exactly are bacteria, and how are they different from us? Well, you know, bacteria are the simplest form of life. I mean, um, next to a virus who doesn't have a cell wall, but uh, they're they're part of the prokaryotes uh, in the um, definition of bac- of uh, microorganisms, and they have a very simple cellular structure. And we thought that they were very simple and insignificant because of the simplicity of their structure. But actually, they're simple for a reason because they can adopt to almost any uh, situation and become building blocks of more complex. Uh, organisms or uh, entities. So they as act a matter as... of fact, we as a human entity are 90% bec- uh, bec- I should say microbes and only 10% human cells. Would you say that they're uh, like a... So, so they are very clever. They, they, they have an intelligence and they are always operate in their own best interest. They're not Would... philanthropic. They're, uh, they're very, you know, uh, centered in their um, objective to sustain their own kind and proliferate. Would you say that they're like a substrate for life above them to be built that, that help life, uh, more complex forms of life structure themselves? Oh, uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, as I tell people that that's why the concept of probiotics and giving these microbes in the right proportion in the right product is so important. And uh, uh, what we used to do historically is just, you know, uh, uh, ferment foods, which is fine. They're functional foods. But now uh, we understand the complexity and you really have to know what organisms you're taking as probiotics, how they're surviving shelf life, how they're surviving Uh, the gastric uh, juices to uh, impact the 27 feet of your GI tract. So it is a very serious and complex issue and should not be tackled by people who just want to sell. Natasha, we got to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk some product and also want to talk about a couple specific health issues. Don't go away, Natasha. You're listening to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We are back on the bright side talking to Natasha Trenev, the founder of the probiotic industry. We're going to talk a little product stuff uh, before we get into that. Natasha, why did you pick acidophilus as your first bacteria, just for curiosity's sake? Um, Well, because acidophilus historically has been around and uh, considered safe and efficacious. And, uh, you know, before anybody knew anything about probiotics, if your organism wasn't an L. acidophilus, it was not accepted as a probiotic. Hmm. I didn't and, know uh, you know, uh, acidophilus, is, we have such a safety history on it that it's uh, really incredible. And uh, I chose strains that uh, can actually produce uh, hydrogen peroxide and bacteria sins, which is a very important feature in order to get some kind of dominance in your small intestine. So in other words, so, you, cho- um, you chose bacteria that would produce hydrogen peroxide as a weapon, so to speak? Is yes, that what you're thinking? And uh, the, very interesting. But the reason this is so brilliant is that they produce the hydrogen peroxide in micro, uh, microns, and they don't produce it just because they, they want to. They produce it to dominate their area, so they don't damage the cellular structure of the body. And, uh, you know, they, they do that to gain dominance over their territory. Uh, that, so that that's very important. So you have to understand uh, the organism that you're selling, not only from a biological reference, what it does in the body, how you can manufacture it so it survives uh, manufacturing, handling, and distribution, and how it reaches your body, and whether it can make it to the small intestine intact. It's uh, it's almost like rocket science, really. Uh, uh, it's very important rocket because science. the... Uh, party selling this product really has to understand the science behind it from many angles in order to incorporate all the criteria necessary to choose, first of all, a safe and efficacious bacteria uh, for this uh, giant, you know, 27 feet of GI tract. 
Okay, so uh, before we, before I f uh, forget here, Natasha's website is natron.com, N-A-T-R-E-N, natron.com. Natasha, I want to ask, first of all, you said something very interesting about the hydrogen peroxide. Am I too, uh, can, I, can I infer that you can use these probiotics, you can use probiotics or good bacteria that produce hydrogen peroxide topically? As anti for anti infective no, no, reasons, because no? they don't produce it because you want them to. Remember what I said: bacteria are very smart. Uh, they mm. only produce it, you know, in order to dominate their territory. That first of all, you have to uh, know that they're capable of doing this, but they never waste cellular energy doing stuff to please you. They do it in order to dominate their preferred area of inhabitation. Have you heard about topical probiotics? There's their skincare industry is kind of a buzz with this as the latest active ingredient. Have you heard of anything about this? Well, topical look, I, you know, I, I came up with the first uh, probiotic face cream and, and uh, face mask that uh, was given to dermatologists, uh, estheticians in, in the 1980s. So uh, I, I told them just to use the fresh powdered probiotics that I sold and mix it with uh, a clear gel aloe vera or with, uh, you know, milk and apply it topically to the face. Uh, but the stuff that they're selling now, you know, that they're calling probiotic uh, face creams, uh, a, lot of, a lot of these people, this is the problem, don't understand what they're selling. And the, product, the products currently in the market have little or if no value. Now, your products are all up at natron.com, and you have quite a few of them. If somebody wants to get started simply, just, just for an all-around product, what would you recommend? Well, I recommend our, either our Healthy Start system or if you want our flagship uh, Healthy Trinity and, you know, you have uh, uh, health issues you want to address, then it's good to start with a Healthy Trinity. But there's something that I instigated that, you know, we have a real probiotic consultants. You know, people say, oh, yeah, we've got consultants standing by. But many of these people have been with the company uh, 10 or more years. I have one that's been with the company 19 years. And these are dedicated people that really help you choose a program to suit your Yourself. And that's what I'm, you know, the, this is why I'm still working, even though I should be taking it easy by now. But uh, I feel like this concept is still not understood. And I'm, I'm grateful that the concept has grown, but there's so much misinformation out there that I worry uh, that, you know, people are, are not going to understand how important this is or how to use, utilize the products. Okay, I only got a couple more minutes. I want to talk about two things. Number one, pets. Animals, dogs, cats, gerbils, yes. you know, domesticated pets, they benefit from probiotics, too. I've seen oh, Absolutely. Pro you know, that uh, uh, actually I brought the concept because it was first uh, in the animal husbandry in industry. In other words, people who grow animals for profit, uh, you know, that they, they gave uh, antibiotics uh, pro prophylactically uh, to make uh, animals gain weight. Uh, and uh, grow fat, uh, and then then we found out that that's not so good because those animals were very unhealthy. So then uh, a few of the smarter you know growers started switching to probiotics, and then I you know the, the, originally I got the idea I said hey if people are giving these products to animals because they grow them for profit, why shouldn't human beings you know uh, uh, have the same advantage and learn about how these products can really transform their lives, and that's really what got me fired up to introduce this concept for human beings. All right. Now, two, we only got a couple more minutes, so I want to cover two, two uh, topics that have, uh, I think have a very important relationship to good bacteria in the gut, probiotics in the gut. One is diabetes. More and more I'm hearing about the relationship between dysbiosis, that is messed up gut bacteria for, for the listeners, dysbiosis and blood sugar. Tell us a, bit, a little bit about that. Right. Well, dysbiosis means a, um, um, exactly what it means is that there is not a uh, optimal balance between bacteria and your gut. And bacteria actually uh, can stimulate for the reduction of insulin so that they have more sugar available for themselves. You know, we never understood that the bacteria are also found in our blood. Um, in fact, uh, 15 years ago, it was a revolutionary finding that bacteria are also in our blood. So uh, it's Good a long bacteria. scientific, you know, lecture. So I'm going to give you the condensed version that, yes, you know, the diet that we eat, the, the processed food, the sugary foods actually stimulate the growth of certain bacteria in our gut. And those bacteria then stimulate the uh, uh, interference of the production of insulin and also the factor of insulin resistance. It's really quite eerie. It's m m more than science fiction if you understood what's going on in your gut. Yes, yeah, so you're saying that uh, there's actually probiotic, good bacteria in the blood. Uh, 
well, not just good bacteria. There's bad bacteria. Well, in bad the blood bacteria, well. yes, I know, but there's actually good bacteria in the blood. There's yes, actually pro- yes, so good. Very uh, just like uh, bad bacteria can get in your blood, good bacteria can get in your blood. And the good bacteria in the blood have a function. They're they're functional. They have a, a uh, they, they, have, they serve functional. We don't know exactly how they're functional, but I know that you know they they, they for instance there, there's an interference with some of the body's uh, 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 function, and uh, since you know they've been around with us. Uh, from the beginning of time, uh, that's why this optimal balance is so important, and that's why you have to know what probiotic you're taking, that uh, you're getting it from somebody who knows what they're selling you, because these bacteria are ubiquitous, and they function for their own benefit, so the bacteria have to be safe, and they have to be efficacious. Is there a number uh, in terms of billions of units that people want to start off with, or does it just depend on the person? Well, no, first of all, um, you know, the, the, there's a play now in the industry, the, what I call the numbers game. There, people are uh, seduced into buying products with large numbers like 50 or 100 billion. Uh, well, those numbers are only significant if the bacteria cells are not stressed and if they can survive shelf life and the stomach acid. But, you know, we, we have what we call a full culture process where our 2 billion are probably more efficacious than the 100 billion that's on the shelf because it comes with its own nurturing growth medium and can survive shelf life in your stomach acid and has what we call the uh, supernatant factors or the fermentation end products, which are equally important as the living bacteria itself. And those are included in your product? Yes, it, that's why if you start either with, uh, keep it simple, either healthy uh, and a healthy start kit or, you know, the um, um, flagship, which is Healthy Trinity. And that's why it's important that, you know, you call and talk to one of our consultants because they'll tell you how to structure a program that benefits you uh, most. Okay, that's natron.com and it's 8664-NATRON. Is that the number you're talking about? Yes, it, it takes us for nature. And I just want to say that it's so important because I'm also the author of two probiotic labeling standards uh, that was, you know, read into a congressional record. And it's so important for people to become familiar what they need to look in order to find an efficacious product because I would tell you that virtually 99% of the product available in the marketplaces are not made by the people selling them. And that's what my mission in life is, whether you buy nature or not is in, irrelevant. What it is, is you need to know more about these probiotics than you do about your iPhone if we're going to change uh, the health concepts for the 21st century. Natasha, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so, so much. Good luck with everything. And, and really, thank you for your work because it is a very, very important work. Uh, probiotics are the foundation, the fundamental aspect. And I, I know you agree, the fundamental aspect of health, good bacteria in the gut. Thanks, Natasha. Have a beautiful yes, day. Good to talk so to you. Thank you so much for having me and have a wonderful day. You too. God bless you. That was Natasha Trenev, natron.com, 8664 natron, uh, if you're interested in learning more. Probiotics are the bomb. Of course, I love the Biolumin Nightly Essence. In any case, fermented foods, probiotics, good bacteria, the Healthy Start Pack, there's so many ways that we can be healthy, and none of them require prescriptions, doctors, the medical model, Obamacare. That's what we're all about here on The Bright Side. I'm, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening, friends. We'll be back at you tomorrow with more good health information. Have an awesome, spectacular, beautiful day. Bye for now.